Hi guys and welcome to Hillbilly Military Modeling. This is where I show you how I approach my model kits and this is the last video in this series that uh, we're doing. Uh, it's going to be painting and weathering on this latest project which is the Soviet Armored Car BA-3 by Zvezda and 135th scale. Um, we have a whole lot to get to in this video so let's go ahead and get into it. First thing to do is to prep everything for painting. This is the method that I like to use. Now we're going to be using Vallejo acrylics, um, black and white. And the first thing to do is to coat everything in the flat black. And then I come back and use the Vallejo white and fill in all the panels on the vehicle. And this is a method that I use for pre-shading. A lot of modelers do it. This is an old method, but it works very well. Next up is going to be our Russian Green 4BO. I don't shade this at all. I use it straight out of the bottle and thin it for the airbrush. Thing to remember is to paint in very light coats. It took me about four light coats to get this paint as you see it and you can see where the pre-shading is showing through the paint so that gives us some nice contrast so the pre-shading works out pretty good especially with green So next up we're going to do some chipping and I have my dollar store car wash sponge. I like to use this because the uh, cells in the sponge are real close together and helps me get uh, fine chipping effects. I trim off all the little corners on it so that I'm more controlled with it. So for our chipping medium we're going to be using the Vallejo Black and I'm going to put a little bit of flow improver in it. This will thin it down so that we don't get big globs of acrylic uh, paint on our sponge. And I just start chipping in little areas wherever there would be more wear, like around the edges of the doors, uh, corners, and anywhere a rock would fly up and cause a chip into the paint. So you want to go kind of easy on it. You don't. I don't particularly like it if it's heavily chipped. And we do the same thing on the turret, concentrating around the hatches. That's where most of the wear is going to occur. And don't forget about the wheels rocks and debris and sticks and logs and stuff will chip the paint there. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the chipping flat black and use a brush, real fine brush, and start to unify the chips right around the corners of the doors, access panels, anywhere where soldiers equipment they get uh, up against the metal and cause excessive chipping. I also use it to kind of emphasize and highlight the uh, armored radiator covers on the front of the vehicle. And here we can see the driver's door which is probably chipped more than the other doors. And we do the same thing with the uh, rear door and around the armored visors and viewports and then 
onto the uh, top of the cab. I'm going to want to unify that a little bit and then move on to the turret. I did the same thing for the gun mount on the corners and right around the edges of the hatches as well. So it's, it's important that you have a really fine brush. And don't forget to put a little chipping on the barrel. Helps give uh, a little bit more realism. So next up, I take Tester's uh, flat steel, which is a little bit more uh, shinier, I guess you could say. And I use them on the corner of the doors at the bottom to emphasize where the paint would have been worn completely through and this will give us a little bit more detail and a little bit um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, I do it on the steps too but a little bit more visual um, interest that's the word I'm looking for now I did go ahead and paint the headlights but I didn't want them to be real shining so I used uh, Tamiya metallic gray XF56 for the headlights and then I use the testers flat gun metal for the machine guns and then I give everything a uh, good coat of uh, model masters acrylic gloss clear and this gets the surface ready for our decals So I'm going to be using uh, Microsol and Microset uh, on the decals. This kit only has three decals, so I just cut those out from the sheet. We're going to put them on one at a time. And as you can see here in the instructions where the lettering is, the, uh, the size of the decal is what I'm going to talk about next because what's in the kit and what's in the instructions is two different things. You can see here how large that decal is. And these decals did not take the microsaw very well. They didn't want to dissolve and get soft and fit around. I worked with these for a long time to get them to set. So after that I take and uh, I seal everything in flat clear. So the flat clear is going to prep the way for our next step, which we're going to be using a dot filter. Uh, I'm using titanium white, yellow ochre, and burnt umber oil colors. Uh, and I put the oil paint on this piece of cardboard, and that helps soak up the linseed oil. Um, linseed oil is what causes the uh, uh, oil paints to dry so slowly. So I prepped this and let it set for about three hours before I started to apply it to the model. Um, you can let it set for a very long time. Uh, and as much of the linseed oil that you can get out of it is good. You just want these uh, oil paints to be a little pasty. You don't want them to be all dried out, but um, part uh, of what, I'm, what you see right now is I am streaking these uh, dots and when you do this you're going to want to do it in whatever direction that water would run off of the vehicle so on vertical surfaces it's up and down and on horizontal surfaces uh, you're going to want to use a blot stippling type action so the blending medium that I'm using on the brush is just clean uh, enamel thinner which the enamel thinner will help us uh, to disperse and dry up whatever's remaining of the linseed oil that's in the oil pigments. Now if you get a little bit on the edges where you've been blending it, just make sure that you go back over it a little bit there and remove any heavy buildups on corners.
And next is the turret. So we're going to do the exact same thing with the turret. So our brush strokes are on the vertical surfaces is up and down. And just blend it until you're happy with it. Now you can actually come back as late as another day, 24 to 36 hours, and still touch up and blend of these uh, oil pigments. Just remember, the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be. And this is the reason why you put the decals on and seal those in. <coughs> is because you're going to want this streaking to go across that to help blend the decals in to the rest of the vehicle because they're going to get streaked as well. And don't forget about the barrel. So here you see that I'm using a stippling motion to blend the uh, dot filter on the top of the turret. Now the top of the turret is a horizontal surface, just like the top of the rear fenders are a horizontal surface. So you have water pooling and sitting on top of these flat surfaces rather than running off, and so you're not going to have big streaks in it. So just use a uh, stippling motion until you get it blended to where you like it. It's all about taste. Your taste, I should say. <laughs> so, <laughs> how you want it to look. Uh, and you can remove these pigments if you get too much or you don't like the effect and you can start all over. Just use the uh, enamel thinner and take it off and just start over. Now a good place to practice this would be on the bottom of the vehicle before you get started on uh, the sides of the vehicle. That is if you're doing a tank. Now on this model we don't really have a surface like that to practice on. So. so I sealed it with flat clear and here's where I made my mistake. Um, I'm trying to use panel liner here to emphasize details on the on the model and panel liner works extremely well the problem I have is I'm applying it over flat clear and it's causing it to wick out from where I want it to be and it's running across the surface all by itself so the mistake was right after I had uh, put the decals on I should have sealed that with the clear gloss did the panel liner let that dry and then used a flat clear coat and uh, do the, the uh, dot filter on that so since I'm out of sequence this is what I get so now I'm gonna have to clean that up now it's Everything that I've done up to this point is sealed uh, with the acrylic uh, flat clear coat. So, using enamel thinner because the uh, panel liner, which I was using the uh, uh, Tamiya panel liner, it's a uh, solvent based and enamel based panel liner, so the enamel thinner will clean it up problem that you get is you're going to have tied marks and you're going to have to blend those out so it just it takes a little bit of time so I could have avoided all this by doing my uh, using the panel liner over a clear gloss coat uh, before I coated it with the um, uh, the flat and then do the dot filter over top of that. But it does clean up. 
Now the effect is a little bit different since it, it it's kind of fuzzy, which gives you more of a grimy look than a defined look. So I think in the end, it, it comes out all right. Uh, you guys will have to be the judge of that. But as you can see here, it will clean up. Not easily, but it, but it does come off. So I go ahead and seal that in. And next up, we are going to use um, Vallejo Thick Mud. Now this is an acrylic based product as well, which means it's going to dry pretty quick. Now I'm, I'm not really concerned about the color of it. Uh, I'm using it for texture to build up wherever mud's going to stick and uh, build up on the bottom of the vehicle, on the undercarriage and the running gear. And it seems like it doesn't want to stick. It, at first you can't get it on the brush and then it doesn't want to leave the brush. <laughs> so <laughs> you just got to play with it and kind of rake it off. But it does dry pretty quick. So if you get this on anything that you don't want it on, like the tires or somewhere where you did not want it, you need to take it off right away. It being acrylic and water-based, uh, it's going to dry quickly and then it's going to be very difficult to remove. So here you can see that I've concentrated on the bottom side of the fenders, uh, the frame, uh, the spare tire where uh, the front tire would have kicked mud up onto it. And of course on the uh, lower armor skirts, and don't forget to put a little bit on the uh, extensions on the steps. And anywhere on the back of the vehicle where heavy mud would be deposited. And don't forget to stipple it uh, on the bottom of the vehicle. So next up, we're going to use AK Interactive Earth Effects. Now this is an enamel-based uh, weathering mud, and I tested it a little bit, and it's kind of thick for what I want to do. So I'm going to take this uh, tester's enamel thinner and thin it out into a little bit thinner wash. About 50/50 is what I used. I figure if you go light, you can always come back and add more, which is what I end up doing. Uh, I build it up a little bit at a time. Now, if you don't do that, you may end up with trying to remove it. As it turns out, though, uh, this product is very forgiving. Uh, you can use your enamel thinner and a clean brush and lightly blend it and move it around wherever you need it or you can remove it entirely if you've made a mistake. Unlike acrylics, enamels are easy to manipulate and very easy to remove. Now if, you're, if, if your base coats and everything are enamel paints, you're going to want to seal that before you use these enamel base uh, washes over top of it because they will dissolve your paint. But since we're putting it on over acrylic, we don't have anything to worry about. Now, like I said, I end up going around the vehicle three or four times. I don't really remember exactly how many times, but uh, just building it up gradually. Now, since it is enamel base, it takes a while for this to dry. So put your first coat on and walk away for an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, and come back and add your next coat. 
And I'm just putting it in areas where the soldiers would have stepped and where the mud would have been deposited uh, by the vehicle moving through mud. Now I'm just concentrating on the lower parts of the hull, or body, I should say. Being a tank builder, I tend to call it a hull. <laughs> so, uh, and don't forget about the edges of the bottom of the fenders and areas like that. And when it comes to the bottom of the vehicle, I'm going to wash this over the acrylic mud that I put on previously for texture. And that's going to change its color. And then next up, don't forget about your rims and hubs. And you're going to do the tires too. So just light coats, just build it up. And you can see here, this is about my third pass, I think, of getting the mud to build up on the uh, on the tires. And so here we are. After everything dries and I give it a final coat of the uh, Model Masters flat clear. Now I put it on the mirrored turntable so that you can see the underside of the vehicle. And so the mirror does give us a false light. So I will take and put a piece of felt on this so that you can see the vehicle better. And here we are. The model's completed. So this kit, it uh, retails in the U.S. for around $23. You might be able to get it cheaper at other places, but um, that's about what I paid for it. If you haven't seen the build video, then you you should go see that before you buy this model to see, you know, kind of judge whether or not you want to um, deal with the little quirks that this kit has. But I think it turned out to be a pretty good representation. It's a nice little model. Now I did come back in and remove mud from the treads of the tires with uh, enamel thinner and a cotton bud because those are the contact areas that the mud would come off of first as it's going down, I say a gravel road or something like that. And so it gives us a little bit of different perspective and interest in our weathering effect. So tell me what you think of the video. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you like what you see here, uh, please smash that like button. And with that, um, I can move on to my next project. So if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe um, so you can see what I'm doing next and I will try to do better at getting these videos out for you guys. <laughs> so, thanks.